psychyogi.org. In Bawetel, 1986, Criminal Interrogation and Confessions. This is also referred to as Imbaum Reed 1986. And also note that this is not a study, but it is an interrogation technique. Background. This is the first piece of research we will be looking at from the interviewing suspect section of making a case as part of your OCR A2 psychology exam. It is further categorised into interrogation. First and foremost, you need to understand what interrogation is. Interrogation, simply put, is a psychologically and in some cases physically aggressive way of interviewing suspects of crimes. Interrogation techniques are illegal to use in the United Kingdom. In the United States, however, such techniques are widespread. The technique we will be looking at is called the Reed Technique. One of the main problems with interrogation techniques is that they often elicit false confessions, which is when a person confesses to a crime they did not commit, and we will look at that in two studies time with Good Johnson and McKeith 1990. So two of the background studies for this is Davis and Leo 2006, who cited over 300 documented examples of false confessions being elicited from the use of interrogation techniques. And Good Johnson 1992 suggests that there are three types of false confession. Voluntary, this is when a person freely confesses to a crime. Coerced, internalised, this is when a suspect doesn't remember where they were when the crime they are suspected of committing was committed. From that point they can be led to believe that they did in fact commit the crime even when there is no evidence to suggest that they did commit the crime. The person internalises the idea that they did commit the crime, from that point they start to believe it until they confess. And then the third one, coerced compliant. This is when the suspect is put under pressure similar to in Milgram's infamous 1963 study, such that they confess as the person conducting the interrogation wants them to. Okay, now we're going to actually look at the Reed technique. So Inbound and Reed developed an approach to present a massive information to a suspect in order to persuade them to confess, leading them to believe they had no other choice. As mentioned earlier, this technique is widely used in the United States and these techniques are illegal to use in the United Kingdom. There are nine steps to this technique. Step one, direct confrontation. The suspect is told directly that they are thought to have committed the offence they have been questioned for. Step two, the suspect is offered the chance to shift the blame away from him or herself by being offered some suggestions or justifications for what might have happened. Step three, the suspect should never be allowed to deny guilt, interrupt and deny any attempt that they give of their denial of guilt. Step four. At this point, the suspect will often try to give reasons why they could not have committed the crime. So, for example, I wasn't there, I was in this shop, and this person will tell you this. Try to use this to move towards a confession by ignoring them. Eventually, the suspect will give up trying. This is very similar to learned helplessness, this step is, which will be in the description and on the article on psychyogi.org if you want to learn about that. Step 5. Reinforce sincerity to ensure that the suspect is receptive by staying close. So this can be simply just using their first name and saying, look, I want to help you here. Step six, the suspect will eventually become quieter and listen more. At this point, move towards offering alternatives. Step seven, pose the alternative question, giving two choices of what the suspect could have done. One being socially more acceptable than the other, but whichever they choose, they will be admitting their guilt. Step eight. Now, step eight and nine are just mainly administrative tasks. Step eight. Get the suspect to admit guilt in front of witnesses. Step 9. Document their admission and get them to sign a confession to avoid them retracting it later. Now for the evaluation of Imbau, we can't really say a great deal apart from the ethics of the technique, which are obviously very low. This technique is firstly going against the paradigm of law. The par one of the, the first paradigms of law is that people should be presumed to be innocent before they are proven guilty. 
So you can't assume guilt, which is what this technique does. Step three says the suspect should never be allowed to deny guilt, which is assuming that they are guilty. And step one, the suspect is told directly that they are thought to have committed the offence. Now this, although it's not presuming guilt, it sort of is. These, this is terribly unethical because it can create a false confession, and a false confession is no use. All it does is get a little tick for that police officer who has elicited the confession. If you've enjoyed this Psych Yogi presentation, why not subscribe to keep up with all the latest videos?